Hi, my name is Kevin Wilhelm. I'm here with the Sea of Prop Tech Committee to talk about visitor management systems. So right off the bat, I unfortunately have some bad news. I don't have a fun acronym for visitor management. VMS has been taken by the camera guys, so I can't really use VMS. So I don't have anything fun or cool like that to share with you. So every time you're going to hear me say visitor management systems, I can't really shorten it. It's kind of as short as it gets. So I want to cover a couple things today. So I am with the PropTech Committee, and we have a strong focus on commercial real estate. So a lot of what I'm talking about may not be an experience that is as relevant to you in the correctional space or the K-12 or even the higher ed. What that can mean is it's really focused on creating exceptional visitor experiences. For example, have you ever been to a job interview? I'm sure you probably have. You know, you've you're got butterflies in your stomach. You're getting real excited. Just imagine you're at that front desk of a brand new Class A office building. Really big interview. And suddenly they're having trouble checking you in. So now you're worried, oh my goodness, I'm going to be late. They don't know who I'm there to see. They're calling up. They're trying to get more information. And your blood pressure is rising. At least mine would be. I, I have bad blood pressure. But, you know, all those types of things can create experiences that are memorable for the wrong reasons. Advances in visitor management are about creating exceptional experiences that really kind of balance out that safety aspect, that frictionless experience aspect. But first and foremost, it's to make it really exceptional, really enjoyable for people. Because we work in Class A office spaces. And one of the things about Class A office spaces is about creating innovation, creating collaboration. That's what we've really seen as a result of the pandemic, is a focus on the office as kind of a hub for interaction. And visitors are a huge part of that. So first off, what is a visitor management system? This is my own phrase, but I like to think that a visitor management system in a commercial real estate building is all about that balance between security and the guest experience. And, and what do I mean by that? You know, a building would have a great experience if everyone could just walk in anytime that they wanted and didn't have to check in at the security desk or anything like that. But visitor management system finds ways to kind of try and balance that out. So what is visitor management system now? I still see a lot of buildings that are using a pen and paper. You know, you walk in, maybe there's a guy at the front desk. He's got, you know, the, the clipboard pointed at you. You just sign and say, oh, I'm here to see Joe. The time you sign in, maybe he calls up Joe. Maybe he just says, yeah, yeah, go to the sixth floor. You're good to go. That's not an exceptional experience. Maybe a low friction experience, which may be good. But it's definitely not an exceptional experience. I also see many sites that have implemented some level of technology. So maybe there's a computer where they can look at a spreadsheet or send an email from it or something like that is a, is a basic way to check you in. And then there's the way that I see visitor management systems going, which is really flexible, really integrated. So a big piece of that is your mobile device. I have there in that image a QR code in my Apple wallet. And it's a pretty common thing now to utilize QR codes or some sort of barcode as a way to identify someone and utilize credentials. I'll get into a little bit more what that means later, but at a base level, what it means, it's a way for someone to validate you and then for you to actually enter the space all with one piece of technology. These are kind of the basic components of a visit range system. There's not a lot. You know, you can certainly add more. You could put an iPad there. You could put maybe some biometrics there if you wanted to, but at its core, these are kind of the most common. A lot of sites are still doing, you know, scanning the license as a way to validate your identity relative to how you've been invited. Sometimes there's still printers. Not everyone wants to get emails with QR codes in it. So maybe I have to check you in and, and print out a little badge or a sticker on a piece of paper to be able to scan somewhere to validate as a credential. Many places are still putting pictures on the badge. Once again, just as a way to kind of balance out, you know, your experience along with what is appropriate for the security of the building. And the last one, on the end there is probably the one that you see the least in a building, but is probably the most important, at least in my opinion, is that QR code scanner or barcode scanner. 
it's really what takes a visitor management system and really makes it an integrated visitor management system, which I find is far superior when we're talking about, you know, how that visitor can access the space, how a visitor can move throughout a space. So the next slide is going to have a lot on it, but I'll kind of go step by step. I do have experience from particular visitor management manufacturers, but my goal was to create something that at a high level talked about what it could look like, but was very much grounded in reality. So there may be some features that are specific, some manufacturers and not others, but it is a very broad, but also very specific kind of depiction of what a visitor management system can be, at least in, in 2023. So kind of going, you know, from the one side over to the six side. There's three different, you know, kind of boxes that I put in. There's cloud hosted systems, on-prem systems, and then what's typically browser based or internet based or app based. So at the top there, you have where someone has gone in and invited someone to a space. So the integrated visitor management systems require that someone has entered someone into a system, confirmed that they're going to be arriving, and then sends that person an invite. When that person gets an invite, they can be tasked with validating a component of their identity. You tasked with validating, um, not as much anymore, but validating COVID vaccination standards or exposure to farm animals in some situations. I know, but many labs still need to worry about that. So that person can validate their identity, validate various components, and then be provided a credential. Their credential could be an Apple-based NFC credential that could be a QR code like I showed earlier, or it could just be a reservation of the system that they're now validated to be able to come in. So security doesn't have to check as many things on site. That middle piece, that hub there, is what the visitor management system is now. It's really just taking data from a lot of different sources and, and kind of moving it around and making it a way that they can all talk to each other. Very briefly, I mean, I'll say that a big part of that is everyone writing integrations and API connections to one another. So you know, with all these different microservices running all sorts of different integrations, it sounds really complex, but it's really where we're moving in terms of visitor management system is crossing over multiple systems, multiple different workflows, multiple different paths, and allowing it to be very flexible even within a singular building. So imagine you have one tenant that really needs someone to validate whether they've been exposed to farm animals because they do lab work. You can make their visitors have to go through a different workflow and validation process than maybe the doctor's office, which just wants to send out a QR code to anyone because you know they want to take their daughter with them and all sorts of other stuff like that. So being a really intelligent visitor management system that's integrated allows that level of flexibility. Continuing on, you'll see that that visitor management system is also integrated into access control. And you may say, why? Well, because that QR code can now be a credential or whatever that credential is. So I can take that QR code, present it at the QR code reader that I'd kind of showed in one of the earlier slides, and it'll now open a turnstile up, call an elevator for me, open a door up, and all throughout the process, Kind of back on the far side whoever invited me will be getting updates so when i scan at the turnstile it's not like i just now go up to the floor and i'm just looking around like hey, how's everyone doing you know have you seen that like john travolta meme but the person that invited me will know hey i should go to the lobby and, and probably meet my you know interviewee my top client because i've got a notification and also at the same time data will be tracked so data is a big big part of everything we do now these days because everyone's trying to understand how they're utilizing their real estate. And it's one thing to track, you know, oh, my employees are going to the office X amount of days a week, but visitors are a huge, huge part of why you spend the money to have a class A office space. You want to show it off to investors, you want to show it off to potential hirees. You want them to be impressed at the level of success that your business has. So visitor management systems can provide that data provide a really important piece when you're evaluating your space utilization and where you want to invest in terms of office space. They talk a lot about flight to class A and um, certainly a big part of that is, you know, the workplace experience for those employees. But I think that the visitor management process and visitors in general are a really big part of that as well. So this data, this integrated process is a big piece of that. And you'll see that just because, you know, I, I want it to be frictionless, I can have someone still be validated on site by security. I, a phrase I like to use a lot is, it's a policy question, not a technology question. So if I still want that more traditional process where you know someone scans their license, 
uh, says who they're here to see, that type of stuff. I can do that, but still allow for situations where less friction is allowed. So maybe there's a particular core tenant, and I want that core tenant to really manage their own visitors. Maybe they have their own desk set up. So they can have their own desk set up, have their own policies, procedures, and all that data is still tracked. So I, as a building owner, building manager, can still confirm who's been in my building. So I still have that visibility while giving my tenants and my partners the controls that they want. And you can cross multiple systems potentially with it as well. So elevators are always a big thing, in particular destination dispatch. These days, because of integration, that same credential, once it's been validated by that security personnel, or maybe it's just validated on a time basis, can be used in base building access control, tenant access control, and also your destination dispatch. So when I, as a visitor, go to that space, I'm now, you know, once again, I'm that interviewee. I'm very important. Everyone wants to hire me. I'm scanning that QR code, maybe being checked in at security, but it's a really fast process because now I have a QR code. They don't know who I'm here to see. They validate it. I'm pretty much good to go. It's just a quick check. So boom, security, boom, turnstile, elevator, ride it up. Maybe there's another turnstile into the tenant space. Boom, scan again. Someone's already there to meet me. And it's been a great process. I'm really impressed by this company. Instead of having a high blood pressure, well, maybe I always have high blood pressure, but my blood pressure is high and I'm not as nervous as I would be if that check-in process had been a little less smooth. So this is kind of a brief overview of what visitor management system is in, in the prop tech space. Thank you so much for joining me. And once again, my name is Kevin Wilhelm from the CIA Prop Tech Committee. Have a great day.